The Wii Shop channel was mine and many, many other kids' first exposure to the world of indie games, specifically Wii-focused indie games that were appropriately dubbed as WiiWare. WiiWare were games that were created and designed specifically for the Wii. That's right, Nintendo finally had one over the Xbox 360 and PS3. WiiWare really allowed for creativity in independent and smaller studios. I think everyone has that one WiiWare game from their childhood that probably wasn't the best game ever, but you played it non-stop. There were some great ones, some bad ones, and definitely a lot of weird ones. So today I wanted to go down memory lane and check out some WiiWare games. Or, to be exact, I want to check out every single WiiWare game that was ever released. Which, according to my studies, there are about 435 games. Will I regret doing this? Probably. But hey, there's a good chance that every game is gonna be someone's favorite. So please get comfy and purchase a million Wii points as we check out the complete WiiWare library. Now, I don't really know how to structure this video, so I decided to just go in alphabetical order. Too fast, four gnomes. Already starting off great. So this game is kind of weird. So the story is that King Gnome tells you that the princess was kidnapped and you gotta save her. You do this by collecting her socks. We have to gatekeep more. We cannot let foot people make games. The game is an auto runner. All you do as the player is press the jump button and use a parachute made out of the princess's undergarments. Oh, that's real nice. Your only real objective is to grab the hundreds of socks thrown throughout the stage. I'll be honest, man. This is just a stupid auto runner. You have unlimited lives, so you can play this all day with no real consequences for losing. Did I save the princess? No. And I never will. 3-2-1 Rattle Battle. Now this game is... actually super fun. I already found a hidden gem I had no clue about. It's essentially a collection of minigames that you have to beat in a very short time limit, a la WarioWare. It's even stylized like WarioWare. All the characters are these cute little creatures, and every stage is super colorful and vibrant. The game is best played multiplayer, though. There's not really a single player mode. You only play one minigame at a time before being thrown back to the main menu. Some of them are good single player, like there's a red light, green light minigame you play with the NPC. Then there's some that are just shaking the remote as fast as you can. Although to be fair, this is the most fun I've had shaking my Wii remote all alone. You know what I'm saying? Okay, good game. 3D Pixel Racing. You pick an ugly pixel car and an ugly pixel human and then... 3, 2, 1, go! Do that. I have no idea how to drive this thing. I was genuinely spending minutes, at least three, trying to figure out how to not swerve off the road. Until I got hit by a police car and game over. Lucky us, we have five in one. Five arcade gems. First game is Jungle Pizza Delivery. You're a pizza boy and you need to shake the Wii Remote and Nunchuck to escape the indigenous people. <laughs> is this racist? Probably. RC Buggy Madness, you drive this little toy car to grab batteries, and then you drive to your corner to drop them off. Whoever has the most batteries at the end wins. To the surprise of no one, it's completely terrible. Templar Bashing, this mace is spinning in the middle and you need to either jump when it comes your way or smack it in another direction. Go nuts. Whirling Rangers, this is like the only decent game in this collection. It's essentially just Tempest 2000. You move around in a circular motion and shoot the enemies while avoiding the asteroids. It's fine. And lastly, we have Lumberjack Trials. You throw axes at the target and wow, how innovative is that? The Wii has never seen anything like this before. And that was five arcade gems, which now that I think about it, only one of them was an actual arcade gem. What a scam. Five Spots Party. It's just an I Spy game. This one having you find five differences on a map. Then there's one where you need to find five hidden monkeys. Now let's just pause right here. Do you see five monkeys? We got this one and the one on his arm. And then I just kind of gave up and it's like, oh what? You didn't see that kind of outline of a monkey? What are you stupid? I did do the monkey game again and it took me to like the most cursed image I've ever seen. This is legit just someone's backyard in Madrid probably. 
I don't know, it's probably this woman's. And then they just threw in some monkey PNGs. Like, this poor woman's backyard is forever immortalized in this Where's Waldo game, or whatever. Five in one solitaire. It's five different ways to play solitaire. And I know how to play zero of them. Oh, hell no. We are not playing 101 different games. As you might expect, it's... 101 different terrible mini-games. I clicked on random to let fate decide what I'd play. The first game it brought me to was this. It's a, a rock throwing game. You throw rocks and that's it. Then there's a basketball game with the worst controls ever. I don't even think I ever got close to the net. Oh, but hey, there's darts. Is your blood pumping? You're actually only able to play like 10 mini-games and you need to get high scores to enable to unlock the others. Which, as you could imagine, I'm not doing. Oh man, wait, hold on here! Adventure Island, the beginning! For those who don't know, Adventure Island is a really fun platformer on the NES, but pretty much stopped existing after the 90s. But in 2009, Hudson Soft brought the game back with a full-on 3D graphical remake. This is what I really like about WiiWare, taking chances and giving older games a chance at new life. I don't think a $50 Adventure Island game on Wii would do great... at all. But for a $10 game or so, it gets the job done. Or in this case, it kinda gets the job done. I don't know, visually it's just kinda... mobile gamey? The animation, the sound effects, it all just feels really cheap. And bro, this snail is an enemy. A bad guy. You're supposed to harm this. But how do you expect me to do that when he's just struggling to move? As you'll see later in the video, this won't be the last time an older franchise gets a revitalization. But with this in particular, I think it would've been better to just keep the 8-bit NES aesthetic. But I don't want to be too mean. It is super cool that Adventure Island got a new game in 2009, and it's still a solid game. Oh, but wait, is this a sequel? Adventure on Lost Island Hidden Object Game. Spoilers, it's not. It's another stupid I Spy game. There's a bunch of items on screen and you gotta find the ones with a specific pattern and color and whatever. I, I guess it's fine if you're three. Oh, but wait! Our searching adventure isn't over yet with Aha! I Found It! Hidden Object Game. Here we're friends with a bunch of aliens and they want us to find objects for them to steal. Also, this is just straight up Timmy Turner. So yeah, there's a list of objects you have to find on each level. What's funny is that some of these objects aren't well-known items. Like, I don't think a five-year-old who's playing is gonna know what a kunai is. Heck, I don't even know what a kusaragima is. It's just a bunch of garbage on screen and you gotta look for it. Please, just let my suffering end. To round out the trilogy of Aha! I Got It! games, we now have an escape room. Bro, did Butch Hartman actually work on these games? There's no way you're trying to pass this off as an original looking character design. Whatever, it's just an escape room, but not a good one. I tried to click on everything to give me a hint on what to do, and everything I clicked on just wasn't important. But hey, there's Power Rangers, so this game's pretty awesome. Airport Mania. This game sucks too. It's like a low-level city sim. You click on airplanes, and then click on the runway, and then move them out of the way, and then click for them to move somewhere else. It's just so boring! iPod Touches were at least out at this time. Why not make this a garbage mobile game? Don't take up space on the Wii Shop channel with this! Alien Crush Returns. Several decades have passed since mankind... Alright, I'm not reading this. You want to know what this game is? It's Pinball! A pinball game where I guess you're playing in some kind of alien intestine? It's pretty gross looking, full of parasites and disgusting squishy noises. Heck, I don't even know if I'm supposed to censor this stuff or not. If you want a pinball game on the Wii, then... No, I'm sure there's gotta be better ones than this. Okay, here's a really interesting game, and yet it moves. You play as this paper cutout man and need to traverse this cave. However, some platforms and areas are impossible to reach, so you need to use the Wii Remote to spin the world around to help the guy out. It's actually a really fun concept and a clever use of the Wii's gimmicks. The game also has a very eerie atmosphere with droning sounds in the background.
I'm Scared, a really fun game that I remember actually playing the demo of back in the day. Oh, heck yeah, bro. Anima, Ark of Sinners. Dude, yes, she is so 2008 DeviantArt hot. So the story is... something, I'm sure. The game itself is a side-scrolling action-adventure beat-em-up. I love this. It perfectly sums up quote-unquote serious games on the Wii. They're working with what they got, and clearly they want to tell a pretty serious story, but the game looks like this, and controls not the greatest. All that being said though, it is a fun game. You can Dark Souls roll and lay on some pretty sick combos. It kind of feels like Bayonetta aesthetically, and since Nintendo wouldn't purchase that franchise for a few more years, this is the best we got. I don't know man, I guess I just have a soft spot in my heart for garbage that's actually trying to be mature. Alright dude, this is Ant Nation. You're playing with ants, trying to flood them out of their hole and squish them. No, I'm not playing a game about ants. What could be less interesting? Welcome to Aquaspace. It's a, a fishbowl simulator. You pick your family of fish and watch them do their thing. You can pet them, I guess. Follow them around while they swim. Yeah, goldfish POV. And even learn about them. I mean, hey, there's gotta be at least a few goldfish fanatics out there that are just losing their minds that such an amazing game can exist. Okay, Arcade Essentials. They're bootleg versions of Space Invaders, Tron, q -Bird, and this bubble popping game. What's it called? Uh, just, just bubble pop. Great. Arcade Sports. You start off by picking a human avatar, and they are just the worst things you'll ever see in life. Everyone is so hideous, and I feel terrible if they were modeled after real-life people. So if this is you, please let me know. The game's just bootleg Wii Sports. There's a pool game I couldn't figure out how to play, and bowling. Although, the bowling physics are completely broken. I'd throw the ball down the middle, and it just immediately curves into the gutter. Like, if you can't get your bowling game right, I'm inclined to dismiss everything else. Arkanoid Plus. Now this stuff kinda angers me, but in a funny way. You got this really epic art style. A story about gods and man or something. And when you actually get to the game, it's Arkanoid! Just a stupid arcade game from the 80s. Sure, there's some color and power-ups, but it's still just Arkanoid. Around the World is a geography game. Pretty basic, honestly. They'll name a country and you have to find it on the map. When you select your country, it'll let you know if you got it or how far away you were from it. This game feels like a primitive start to GeoGuessr, which would take on this concept fully and run with it. Honestly though, unless you're studying, there's no need for this game. But at least the game's like, kinda difficult. They're not just like, where's Canada? They wanted me to find Astana. Like what? Is that near Silverant and Tetheala? What are you talking about? Art of Balance, a game I've actually heard mentioned on the greatest WiiWare games list, but never checked out for myself. After playing it, yep, definitely deserves to be there. So here you're given a bunch of random shapes that need to find the best way to stack them up on each other without falling into the water. It's a pretty big brain game, which I obviously don't have. It has such a chill vibe to it. The zen garden in the background, the relaxing music to help you focus. You could easily just spend hours and hours just sitting here, studying the geometry and physics of the shapes to stack them properly. Although I kinda mess up way too often. I think I must have been that stupid kid trying to put the triangle block in the square hall, you know what I mean? Forget I said that. Alright, the next few games are from the Art Style series. First one being Cubelo. This giant shape is slowly spinning around the void and you have to click on the correct colors as they appear. At least, I think that's what you're supposed to do. Again, these games are in the Art Style series, so I guess they're going for a more abstract and artsy approach. Same with the next game, Light Tracks. You play as this ray of light and need to avoid the obstacles. I was really behind the other ones and I didn't know how to catch up. There's no accelerate button or anything. But this one does have a nice chill vibe to it. I can just imagine playing this game at night being engulfed in colors, and, and it does feel satisfying just moving the wavelength up, down, and all around. Super simple, but gets the job done. 
Then there's Orbion, which straight up just steals the Mother logo. I don't know what that's about. This one's a little bland. There's an orb floating around space and you get to control the planet's atmosphere, either pulling the orb towards the planet or pushing it away. I guess the goal is to make it to the end without the orb being destroyed. It's okay, but loses its luster pretty quickly. And the last game in the series is Rotohex, probably the only thing that resembles a game. These triangle pieces are falling down and you need to rotate them to create a hexagon. It's a pretty chill puzzle game that doesn't offer much though in terms of visual. And those were the art style games. Honestly, probably would have been better to release them as a package deal, like a foreign one. Like at least maybe I could justify getting this back in the day. Now we've gone from visually exciting to literal middle school PowerPoint presentation, Astro Bugs. And is it me, or is the menu, like, not centered? Like, there's way more space on the left than on the right. This game better be the best thing ever. It's Balloon Pop. It's Balloon Pop with ugly CGI creatures. I can't believe I went through all this trouble and eye pain for Balloon Pop. Ava and the Cubes of Light. Okay, I'm sure you've played this little game called Mario Galaxy before, right? You know those levels where you can wrap around the stage and run up the walls? Okay, think that, but more limiting and with bad controls, and bad physics, and zero charm. Seriously, this is so boring. There's not even any enemies to throw in some variety. You're walking around this empty, bland cube. Like, look at this ramp here. In Sonic or any other game, you'd think you need some kind of momentum to fully run up it, but here, Ava can just do everything at a snail's pace. It's very unsatisfying, and dare I say, bad. Babel Rising. In this game, you play as God, literally. The game even refers to you, the player, as God on multiple occasions. Now, I ain't read the Bible in quite some time, but I can't remember the time when God struck down hundreds of people building a pyramid. I actually had to Google, when did God strike down people making a pyramid, and it's in Genesis 11. Sega Genesis, okay. Yeah, kind of a weird Bible game. Usually these religious games are very peaceful and wanting to teach you a nice moral lesson, but here you're just clicking on people to vaporize them. You even have Mother Nature at your fingertips as power-ups, where you can literally have lightning strike these people or have a tsunami show up. How charming. Okay, back to nature. It's another children's game. You'll spend most of your time, once again, looking for objects. Although here you sometimes get to hammer a boat. Like, 15 times. Does it really need this many nails? I don't know. Oh no, dude, come on! Balloon Pop Festival! Now, despite being called Balloon Pop, this is not Balloon Pop. It's one of these puzzle games where you need to match three or more objects in a row. I don't know what this is. Bejeweled? Yeah, great. It's Bejeweled on Wii, just what the world needed. Bang Attack! You just have to touch objects of three or more that are already touching each other. There's no strategy or anything else you can do. You just gotta be like, oh dude, those three bananas are touching each other. Click. And you win. It's a lesser version of Bejeweled on Wii. Battle Poker. Now, I'm not much of a gambling man myself, but this does not look like any poker I've ever played in my life. They literally just made Bejeweled Poker. I'm so sick of Bejeweled-like games on the Wii. Bejeweled 2. Well, if you're gonna have all these rip-offs, at least have the original here, too. You know, this was a great way to convince your mom to buy a Wii. Look what's on it, mom! You can play the Wii while I'm at school. Genius plan. Alright, we got our first licensed game. Ben 10 Alien Force The Rise of Hex. Now, I actually have a couple of Ben 10 games on the PS2, and from what I can remember, they were pretty solid. This game is definitely... well... the Wii version of those games. It's a side-scrolling action game, beating up the bad guys, transforming into aliens, using their powers for certain situations, and having cutscenes that look like a dating sim. And considering this is Ben 10, this isn't the first time I've seen something like that. Honestly, it's a pretty basic game, but as a kid, this is exactly the kind of stuff I was a sucker for. They don't make licensed games like this anymore. Simple action games you can play with a friend. I was transported back to my childhood playing this. Big Bass Arcade. It's a goddamn fishing game. You toss out your line and enjoy your fishing. 
Man, this game is boring as hell. It's like fishing in real life. You spend a lot of time waiting and doing nothing. Big kahuna party. Surprise, it's bejeweled. What blows my mind is that I'm going in alphabetical order, so the fact we've just had this many bejeweled games blows my mind. Alright, dude, big town shootout. Is it a fun on-rails western shooter? No, of course not! You're just shooting stagnant objects and minigames for points. It gets old after five minutes. Yeah, man, alright, it's time for Bingo Party Deluxe. You play against CPU or your friends if you want to make them suffer alongside you. This disembodied voice yells out numbers and letters and you gotta be the quickest person to leave your stamp on it until you get bingo. It's surprisingly kind of fun. BitBoy. You play as the square and need to collect other squares while avoiding these enemies. It's pretty basic and visually fairly uninteresting, but still a fun, simple arcade experience. Although, the game was super short, only lasting like five stages, and I beat the game. But wait, after beating BitBoy, you'll unlock 8BitBoy. It's the same exact game, but with updated... everything. The graphics are nicer, there's some actual animation, the music is updated, and our little square guy now has a face. Okay, that's pretty cool. Once again, though, also very short, only being five or six stages. So, once I beat the game again, WAIT! Because now, we have Super Bit Boy! The same game, but with 16-bit Super Nintendo enhancements. More color, more animation, better music, better pizza, you can't go wrong! So, that's the gimmick of Bit Boy. You get to play through what's essentially the basic history of gaming. Up until 2008. You don't have all the additions unlocked right from the get-go, meaning on your first playthrough, you'll need to play in order. Heck, by the time I got to BitBoy64, I was kinda hooked. I was curious as to what new things they'd add to make the game feel like it came out during that period. And the hits just keep coming, because now we're checking out the BitTrip series, a series of multiple games that follow a similar theme. Great rhythm games with fantastic music, all of which are fairly simple to play and will 99% of the time capture you in a hypnotic gaze for hours. First game is Bit Trip Beat. The best way I could describe this game is that it's one person rhythm pong. You play as this paddle and need to move it up and down to hit the objects. Every hit will create part of a beat. Keep the streak going and the screen will get more and more intense. Full of crazy patterns you gotta keep track of to create a visual and audio nirvana. Then we have Bit Trip Core. Same concept, except now you're playing with the D-pad. The higher the streak, the crazier the audio and video gets. Although I'll be honest, maybe it's just because I'm no longer a young lad with great reflexes, but this game was insanely difficult for me to keep up with and my reaction time was garbage. I never got anywhere close to a streak and died pretty much quickly every time. Bit Trip Fate. I guess this is also a good time to mention that each game also has a <coughs> story. You'll usually get an opening cutscene with this character who I guess is pretty much the mascot of the series. His name is Commander Video and I only know that because I had to Google it. Each of these opening cutscenes are incredibly vague and threatening where we don't really learn anything. But back to Bit Trip Fate, it's kind of an on-rails side-scroller. Commander Video can only move on this set path, but there's all kinds of enemies you need to avoid and whatnot. It's okay. I kept trying to touch these projectiles because they look strikingly similar to the ones you're supposed to hit in other Bit Trip games. You know, to create the beat. But I guess not here. I never really got anything musically going, so maybe I'm playing it wrong? I feel like I got pretty far and nothing really happened. Still an okay time, I guess. Alright, now we're in business, baby. Bit Trip Runner. This was easily my favorite WiiWare game back in the day. It's an auto runner, hence Bit Trip Runner. All you really need to do is jump over the obstacles to make it to the end of the stage. There's these red power-ups though that are definitely worth collecting, because every time you grab one, that's where the music and visuals will get an upgrade. And it's so seamless and satisfying every time. You'll start off the stage like this. Okay, pretty boring. And as you go on a streak and collect everything, it turns into this. It's 
so addicting, especially for something as simple and usually not fun like an auto runner. Bitrip Runner is insanely addicting. Then there's Bitrip Flux. It's pretty much the same thing as Bitrip Beat, but now the paddles are on the right hand side. And lastly, we have Bitrip Void. You control this black blob in the void and need to collect the black blocks and avoid the white ones. The more you collect, the bigger your blob becomes and harder to avoid the white ones. But the bigger you get, the better the visuals and music get. I think you get the picture by now. A really fun and solid challenge. Whenever I think of WiiWare, the Bit Trip series is immediately what I think of as the flagship mascot titles. Now here's a game trying to sneak into the Bit Trip family reunion, Bitos. The game is like Tetris, but different. And worse, you have all these Tetris shapes you've grown to know and love, but you can just place them anywhere, removing any challenge or fun. You still need to complete lines, just without the quick thinking of what shapes need to go where. You're given as much time as you really need to just place the shapes anywhere. It's not fun! Blaster Master Overdrive. Continuing with the NES reboots and sequels train, we got Blaster Master. For the uninformed, Blaster Master is a side-scroller where you play as a car. The first ever car side-scroller that can platform and jump around. I really like this art style. It's 3D, I think, but not so obvious like in Adventure Island. So if they're not going to stick with a pixel art style, then this creative 3D asset approach is the best way to do it. The game's kind of a Metroidvania, which I definitely wasn't expecting. Thumbs up. Something that's not fun though is Block Breaker Deluxe. You got this cool Miami party vibe going on, you're like, whoa, what exciting experience am I in for? Block Breaker, an Atari game with a Florida party aesthetic. Blood Beach. You know what concept would be great for a Wii game meant for kids? A game based off of D-Day and World War I. You're on the beach of Normandy and they're shooting down planes. Something about this being on the Wii just doesn't feel right. This is the entire game, by the way. Bloons! You throw darts and hit bloons. Think there's more to it? You'd be wrong. Bobby Carrot Forever, the long-awaited entry in the Bobby Carrot series on PC. It's a basic puzzle game for kids. You need to collect all the carrots and make your way to the exit. It's honestly a really fun game. The puzzles are genuinely creative and satisfying to solve. You ride lily pads and lawnmowers, need to avoid traps. Think of the best dungeons you've ever played in an RPG, and Bobby Carrot trounces all of them. Boings. Here's a game that I think actually had the potential to be a classic on the Wii. You play as these little... Boings. You use the nunchuck to move them left and right, but they can't jump, so if you want to reach a platform, you need to use the Wii Remote to aim and fling them. Kinda like it's Angry Birds. There's puzzles, platforming, and some of the flinging is time sensitive, meaning you'll need to act quick on your feet. The game just lacks some finesse and is fairly barren in terms of music and memorable level design, but still a really solid game that utilizes motion controls in a fun and creative way. Bomberman Blast. It's an 8-player Bomberman game. Every round is so chaotic, I swear every game must last like less than a minute long. Apparently back in the day when Nintendo still cared about the Wii, it had online multiplayer. So the novelty of playing 8-player Bomberman with friends and strangers all around the world was tons of fun. But hey, if you got three other friends hanging around, you could still have local multiplayer. What else can I say apart from, it's Bomberman, it's fun, yay! Here's Bonsai Barber. You play as a hairstylist who just moved into this town inhabited by sentient trees and vegetables. They all come in asking for haircuts and you gotta deliver the goods. The reference pictures though are kinda weak. Like this potato is like, yeah, give me that for my haircut. I'll be honest, this game is super fun. But not because the haircutting aspect is really solid. More so, I just like messing up the hair and giving them the worst looking cuts ever. And what's great is that the vegetables will react to what's going on. They have this look on their face like, whoa, you're messing up my fade, bro. And you can also just take snapshots of their bad haircut to have on file. I don't know, maybe I'm just broken from all these WiiWare games. I find this hilarious. Brain Challenge, it's a homework game. Do math, do writing, solve problems. 
Brain drain! You gotta match your board to correct the, the, the pattern. Uh, who I don't know, who cares? Bruiser and scratch. You push boxes to solve puzzles. Here's what happened my first try. And then I turned the game off. True story. Bubble Bobble Plus, it's Bubble Bobble on the Wii. I don't know what else to say. Thanks for coming. Burger Time World Tour, a 3D remake of the arcade game. It's visually kind of a nightmare, but you can tell it's cool and futuristic because it takes place in space. Like, wow, man, isn't this so epic? Mr. Burger Time himself is also just the worst the Wii ever has to offer. Burn the rope. So you need to burn the rope in a specific pattern, but it's weird because every time I light it, the flame immediately dies out. They say something like, fire always burns upwards, which, hey, I don't know geography, I don't know if that's true, but why am I forced to learn science about this fire burning game? Alright, up next is Carmen San Diego. Now there's actually like five of these games on WiiWare, but for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go over every single one, mainly because they all follow the same exact formula. You play as a cop and go around talking to NPCs and civilians to gather evidence about a case. They say things like, it just isn't cricket. When you're not mindlessly talking to NPCs, you'll be doing basic motion control puzzles. They're okay, but honestly, I wasn't getting too hooked. The entire game is just a little too lackluster and feels very robotic. No love or passion anywhere. Carnival King. Once again, a bunch of mediocre minigames that have you pointing the Wii remote at the screen. Lots of creativity like shooting targets, shooting targets, and shooting targets. Alright, hold up now. Castlevania The Adventure Rebirth. Castlevania The Adventure was actually originally a Game Boy game. Naturally, being on a handheld, the game was a little mid. And M2, the game's developers, went incredibly hard. They developed two more games on WiiWare under the Rebirth series. And each game is filled to the brim with quality. Castlevania for me is usually a very frustrating experience. More often than not due to the stiff controls, but here Simon feels very fluid and free. Sure, there's a bit of stiffness since that comes with the territory, but this is honestly one of the best feeling 2D Castlevanias. The visuals are incredibly beautiful, and don't even get me started on that music. It's such a nice breath of fresh air considering Castlevania at the time was focusing more on the RPG Metroidvania style. And then a few years later we'd get the Castlevania Lords of Shadow series, which were 3D action games. So being able to play a really solid 2D Castlevania in the mid-2000s is a nice feeling. I love Cave Story. I could easily make an entire hour-long video talking about it. It was one of my favorite games of all time, and I have WiiWare to thank for introducing me to it all the way back in 2010. The game was initially released all the way back on the PC in 2004. You take control of a robot named Quote, who wakes up in a cave with amnesia. The entire game takes place in this cave, but as you'll quickly see, this cave has a lot to offer in terms of area variety. There's dungeons, towns, and cute NPCs you'll meet along the way. The dialogue is very quirky and fun too. If you like games like Undertale with its absurd and sometimes awkward meta humor, then Cave Story will be right up your alley. The game itself is a metroidvania, exploring the world, shooting enemies, and learning about who you are. It is indeed a Cave Story. Alright, here's the magnum opus of WiiWare, Chick Chick Boom. Now, my Wii Remote really started to act up here, so the gameplay is incredibly pitiful. What you're doing is basically clicking on different items and attacks you'll use to fight the enemy. When you select an attack, you'll need to draw an outline in the correct order as fast as you can to quickly execute the attack. The faster you can do it, the faster you'll be able to deal out more damage. But again, I was having Wiimote issues and couldn't make that happen. Christmas Clicks, it's Christmas Bejeweled. No. Kronos Twins DX. You take control of a blue guy with a cannon on his arm. I've seen this somewhere. Initially, yeah, the game comes off as a Mega Man clone, but not a very good one. The game just feels very slow and cumbersome. 
The characters are done with sprites, which I really like, but the backgrounds and platforms are all cheap-looking Wii 3D models, so it kinda clashes. I was fighting a boss that I guess I was supposed to lose to in order to progress, but he really wasn't challenging. Usually if the game wants you to lose to a boss, they make them incredibly difficult. After some story that I definitely care about, we get the main gimmick of the game, controlling two versions of our main character simultaneously and in different timelines. It's a concept that sounds cool on paper, but in execution it just makes the game very slow. Constantly needing to shift your eyes between the screens to see if there's an obstacle in your way or something. This idea could have worked in a multiplayer setting, but by yourself it takes what's already a meh, cumbersome game and makes it a lot more unappealing. Kokuto Fishing, it's another boring fishing game, but instead of being on the beautiful lakes in Montana, we're in the underworld fishing with this demon baby. It controls like garbage and needless to say, I'm not feeling relaxed. Believe it or not, our adventures with this ugly demon Kokuto isn't over yet. With Kokuto Platform Jumper. What a terrible name, you didn't even try. The game is literally a platformer. You ascend up and up this never-ending spiral cave jumping on platforms. You can create lava bridges as platforms to reach higher areas. And... That's it. That's the only form of gameplay to break up the monotony of just jumping up and up for hours. If you wanted to be literal with this game, you shouldn't have called it Kokuto Platform Jumper. You should have called it Kokuto's Boring Piece of Shit. Colors with a Z. You point the Wii mode at the screen and guide your alien to grab colors. That'll be $10. Finally, some more good food. Alongside Castlevania Rebirth, M2 would graciously give us a new Contra game. Contra Rebirth. Unlike Castlevania The Adventure though, this game isn't a remake of any previous game, but a full-on new original experience. Everything I praised about Castlevania applies here. Gorgeous visuals, amazing music, and tight gameplay. Again, in 2009, being able to play a classic Contra game was such a treat. Contra is also a game I usually do terrible at, and barely make it out of level 1. But here it seems they kinda turned down the difficulty so you're not turned off immediately, and can actually make some progress. Another great entry by M2. Okay, this is Copter Crisis. You fly a helicopter, but I kept taking damage by something, and I wasn't in the mood to figure out what. Uh, this is Cozy Fire. It's a simulated fireplace on your Nintendo Wii. You can select what kind of wood you want to burn, poke and stir the fire to keep it going. Heck, you can even change the background scenery to match your vibe. I also don't totally hate it. You see, not all homes have a fireplace, so it's honestly not a terrible alternative to turn on this game during Christmas for some background and fire burning ASMR. Critter Roundup is a game where you need to fence in these animals that are already enclosed in a fence. It's honestly not that fun, and I feel bad for putting this pig in a small pen. Cruise Party. A gambling game that takes place on a boat. Now again, I'm not much of a gambling man, but I do partake in some blackjack in my real life. And here's my strategy. Bet every penny you have and just keep saying hit me until you're at 21. Never hold, that's for cowards. Sure, sometimes you lose your money, but 95% of gamblers quit before they hit the jackpot. Always remember that, kids. Final Fantasy Crystal Defenders R1. This game is super addicting. It's a tower defense game. You have a limited amount of money to spend on warriors and mages. You strategically need to place them down on the map. When you're happy with their positions, hordes of enemies will follow a set path, and your party needs to be able to wipe them out. After every successful wave, you'll earn money that you can use to either level up and strengthen your team, or add more characters to the board. And as you can imagine, each wave of enemies gets stronger and stronger. This is the first tower defense game I've actually sat down and played. I never thought I'd be interested in them. I guess I thought they would be too boring? But clearly I'm in the wrong. Crystal Defenders R1 is super addicting, and maybe it's my ADHD, but seeing these hordes of enemies getting obliterated in seconds tickles a part of my brain I can't explain. The game was so good it got a sequel, Crystal Defenders R2. It's the same exact game but with more enemies, classes, locations, etc. 
I really wish these games found their way onto the Switch or something. This is a perfect game to play on the go, which I guess checks out considering it was initially a mobile game. Dart Rage, it's throwing darts. The only thing that makes me rage about this is that it's the 15th game to have stupid darts in it. So this game was made by Arc System Works, the company that made beloved fighting games like Blaze Blue, Guilty Gear, and Undernight in Birth, just to name a few. They also made Deer Captor, a Wii game where you shoot sweet innocent deer minding their own business. This is extra bad, like I know deer aren't violent in real life, but for the sake of this game couldn't you make them rabid or zombies or something? And you know what's worse than a deer shooting game on Wii? Two deer shooting games on Wii. This one is much of the same, but at least this time the deer actually attack you. Fantastic. This is the actual music they chose for this title screen. Defend Your Castle is a game I played a ton of in middle school on the school computers. It's another tower defense game, but here your main form of attack is to point your Wiimote at the screen and fling the bad guys in the air so they come crashing down and go splat. That's the funniest noise ever, I don't care what anyone says. After every round, you'll be able to buy upgrades to your castle, be it more shields, archers on the roof, or just refill the castle's health from whatever damage it took previously. It's a very simple, but still a very fun game. Derby Dogs is just a lesser version of the Chow Garden, but with dogs. You'll pick your breed, feed them, train them, and give them love. All of this so they can be the best racing dog out there and win the championship. That's right, it's a race, and my dog's gonna be the fastest racist of them all! Wow, I know we joke about MS Paint drawings a lot, but this genuinely looks like it was made in paint! Now, despite that not great first impressions you get from the title, Diner Dash is actually a really fun game. You take control of a woman who's sick of her busy and boring office job, so she decides to open up a restaurant, and besides the cook, she's the only employee there, and you'll need to take care of everything. How the game works is that you have a very small amount of time to first sit down the customers, then take their order, then hand it to the chef. When he's done cooking, you need to bring the customers their food. After they eat it, you'll take their check and need to bust the table. Each customer needs to be done in that exact order. At first, it's an easy enough operation to follow, but as the game goes on, customers will be flooding into the restaurant, and you'll need to keep track of what's already been done to who. You'll take someone's order, but there's people waiting to be seated, and if you take too long, they'll leave. You might be busting a table while another customer is impatient because you haven't taken their order yet. I've never worked at a restaurant, but I feel like this game surprisingly manages to capture that hectic, fast-paced environment of working at a restaurant. The NPC's timers are very short. You'll be thinking, what customer is this impatient? When in reality, almost a lot of people who eat out are like this. Not me though, I'm very patient. I know I could never do this job without breaking someone's neck who gave me attitude. Diner Dash is honestly a hidden gem that's tons of fun. Dive. You're a diver looking for treasure. The whole game is an underwater level, which isn't a compliment. You swim slowly and sometimes shoot innocent jellyfish because you're bored. Doc clock the toasted sandwich of time, hey why not? You play as Rick and do platforming stuff. There's a gimmick with the Wii Remote but I couldn't figure it out and honestly just kinda gave up. Sorry, I was playing this at 3am and was very tired. Doc Lewis's Punch Out. I don't know what the heck this is. It's literally just punch out on Wii, but you're only able to fight Doc Lewis in a practice fight. Apparently it was free to Club Nintendo Platinum members in 2009, and was only available to them until 2015. Yeah, 2015, two years before the Switch came out. Why did you wait so long? Also, if you're a Platinum Club Nintendo member, odds are you already bought Punch Out on Wii, the full game. Shouldn't this game be a free download for everyone? So more people would check it out and be like, oh, I think I want to buy the full game now. But hey, that's just my 10 cents. My two cents is free. All right, our first Japanese exclusive WiiWare game, Downtown Niketsu Dodgeball. These dodgeball games have actually existed in the past in arcades and on the NES and SNES. You create a team and play dodgeball. Throw the ball, catch the ball to bring in a teammate who's out, and so forth and so on. These are really fun games, and I'm always a fan of obscure sports games. Oh. 
Dr. Mario Online RX. It's Dr. Mario on Wii. I'm surprised this game is only limited to WiiWare though. I like the Wii upgrades, the 3D models of the characters, and updated music. What makes the game special though is that, once again, you could play it online. Test your Dr. Mario skills with people from all around the world. Although, since I'm not playing this in 2008, multiplayer was out of the picture for me. Dracula! It's a top-down shooter where you need to survive hordes of enemies. It's okay. Dragon Master Spellcaster, it's a dragon fighting game that does everything wrong. I guess I accidentally selected multiplayer, so the second player was just doing nothing. But even this still sums up all of the game's problems. The flying controls are broken, the attacks are not satisfying, and it's hard to tell what's going on. Here's what it looks and sounds like when you land a successful attack. See how there's no response to anything going on? L. Drift Mania. The game peaks with its really catchy title music. If you're a fan of Slot Car Derby, that Mario Party 2 minigame, then congrats, here's an entire game based off that. I personally hate that minigame, so therefore, this is not for me. Jesus, this is Drill Sergeant Mindstrong. You play as kids in boot camp and need to follow whatever orders your drill sergeant tells you. Sounds garbage on paper, but this game is just silly enough to be entertaining. For example, your characters don't have actual names, but random nicknames like Hosebag, Dork, or Doormat. After every sentence, each player needs to hit the A button as a Sir Yes Sir button. The first minigame, for example, everyone needs to shake the Wii Remote to match the beat. You need to constantly do this to get points. However, that's not the only part of this game, because there's also trivia you need to answer correctly and in a short time limit, all while still shaking the Wiimote to keep your marching pace. Again, it's just stupid enough to work. Drop Zone Under Fire, you're in a futuristic world and jump out of a futuristic plane and need to free fall and hit all the futuristic targets. If this is the future, keep me in the past. Eat Eat Fight is another amazing game I never knew existed. You take on the role of a sumo wrestler. The game asks you arbitrary questions that might play into your stats or story, but for the most part, you're gonna be training as a sumo wrestler to be the best. It's essentially another version of the Chao Garden, but for big fat men. You'll need to play a bunch of mini games for your training. For example, there's a match three game that if you're able to chain more and more items together and get bigger combos, the wrestler's food will get bigger and bigger, making him fatter. The actual fighting aspect of the game is also surprisingly deep and solid as well. You can slap your opponents in the face, and if you both lock up with each other, you'll need to figure out what slam works best. You actually have to take into account your strength, leverage of your opponent, as well as worrying about you not getting taken down either. The visuals are also super charming. Everyone looks kawaii. Alright, I'll never say that again. Hot damn, alright! Eco Shooter Plant 530. Hey, damn, what happened to Eco Shooter Plant 1 through 529? So here you take control of a guy who really cares about the environment. The game is an on rail shooter where you're shooting at barrels and picking up trash. I understand you wanted to make an eco friendly game, but wouldn't it have been more fun if we were shooting mutated trash monsters or something? Like, make it a fun pollution game, not a boring one. Now here's the first ever WiiWare game I bought with my own money. Eduardo the Samurai Toaster. It's a run and gun where you play as... I think you know. And it's a really solid run and gun. It has the fun, fast gameplay like Contra the Alien Wars, but lacks a lot of the difficulty. Sure, you could say that it's a bad thing since the game never really gets too difficult, but I think just exploring these unique worlds that have very strong traditional Japanese feel to them is very chill. Especially with the game being 4 player couch co-op, give it a shot if you get the chance. Woo, is it getting hot in here for anyone else? This is Enjoy Your Massage. You play as an amateur masseuse working at a massage parlor that only the hottest of chicks come to. Like, damn, don't you want to see her in the nude? So the game is... Simon Says. 
Parts of the girl's back light up in a certain order and you gotta hit it in the exact order for them to achieve maximum pleasure. The only question I have is, who is this game for? Because the Simon Says nature of it feels like it's for dumb little kids, but dumb little kids don't care about hot anime babes like this. This is a game for nobody. Equilibrio is a pretty okay game that utilizes motion controls. You need to tilt the stage around to guide this ball into a hole. Fantastic. Escape Vector is Pac-Man with extra steps. Evasive space. You guide this spaceship through tight corridors and caverns. Hallelujah! Hey man, why does this sound like a bootleg Super Nintendo game? Anyway, Excite Bike. Another NES classic given new life on the Wii. If you've played Excite Bike, you know what to expect. Drive on this course, get some sick airs, etc. The game does look a little bland. Not a lot of colors or things that pop, but I'm just nitpicking at this point. At least it's a game. That's more than I could say about a lot of what we've checked out so far. Family Pirate Party. This is actually a series of games featuring this anime family. You start off by picking your character, and I obviously went with Mommy because she makes me feel something. Did... Did anyone else see that? They gave the mom jiggle physics in this party game for kids! The game itself is just Mario Party without the mini-games. So, I guess it's more like Fortune Street? Roll the dice, land on some spots, and get some money, I guess. It's not that fun. Continuing our adventure with this family, we got Family Tennis, and good lord, this team must really like the mom character. She gets the most... development. The main game, as you might guess, is just tennis, but it's surprisingly pretty fun. It controls well and there's some nice speed to the hits. It was actually kinda hard. I lost to the CPU on the first game. But I didn't mind. Up next is a game for your grandma, I guess. Fantasy Slots. It's a slot machine on Wii. I still don't really know how slot machines work, so just hit the max bed and hope for the best. This game really is for, like, your gambling addicted family member because there's no music playing in the background or anything. I can already smell the cigarettes. Fast Racing League. It's an F-Zero clone. It's nice seeing a company try their hands at something other than Mario Kart. It's actually not half bad, but maybe I'm just saying that because I'm a starved F-Zero fan. You got power-ups, can drive on the ceiling, and most importantly, the speed feels good. I'll take it. Yeehaw, partner, it's Fast Draw Showdown. When it comes to Fast Draw, there's only two types of people. The fast, and the dead. And we're fixing to find out where you stand. Oh boy, it's one of these. So the game utilizes live-action footage for everything. The cutscenes and gameplay are all fully acted and playable. Oh, this stinks! So you'll be tasked with hunting down multiple different outlaws where you'll have a standoff with them. The Wiimote needs to be pointed away from the TV, and when it's time to draw your weapon, you'll have to quickly point at the bad guy and shoot at them before they get you. Hey amigo! Hey, I love my little friend, eh? It's all very silly and fun. This game apparently came out in 1994, so it's got a lot of 90s charm. Mainly bad acting. Don't stop now. It was just getting fun. I kinda had fun with it. Alright, Fenimore Fillmore the Westerner. We start off with this really long animated intro that I guess the team was really proud of, because you can't skip it! It's a generic western movie that's not good. When you finally get to the gameplay, it's a point-and-click adventure. I'm sorry, I've never been into this kind of stuff. It's boring. My Life as a Dark Lord, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. So here we get to do a little role reversal. You take on the role of a Dark Lord, and it's your job to fight and destroy the good guys. It's another tower defense game. Basically, you get to add floors to this tower that you can fill with enemies. You have a limited budget and resources, so you gotta play it smart. 
The more good guys you defeat, the more money you get. After you lay out your team, the heroes will start to ascend the tower to do battle. It's a charming concept playing as the villain. The visuals and music are all very whimsy, which is funny considering... Well, we're slaughtering good guys. It's another fun tower defense game. If I had a nickel for every time I had a good Final Fantasy tower defense game on WiiWare, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird it's happened twice. Alright, so this is Final Fantasy IV The After Years, a prologue of sorts to Final Fantasy IV. The game takes place 17 years after the events of IV, which is coincidentally how long it was between this game and its predecessor. I never played Final Fantasy IV, so there's not really much here for me personally, but if you like that game, then obviously coming back to its world and characters, all with the same nostalgic visuals and soundtrack, is going to tickle you in all the right ways. Are you kidding me, dude? We have yet another Fireplace Simulator! Okay, look, one was enough. It was cute, funny, haha, <laughs> Fireplace on Wii. Now, it's getting ridiculous. This one, though, is a little more ominous. It feels like I'm playing a horror game. This one's not as good, surprisingly. I didn't think I was gonna be ranking Fireplace games. Okay, it's time for the Fish Round! First up is Fish Tank. It's a stupid puzzle game where you gotta line up the same colored fish. Yep, Fish Bejeweled. Bro, why does this title music go so hard? The game itself is just a fishing mini game. Like here's one where you need to swing the net back and forth to catch the fish when they jump out of the pond. It's kinda mid, but the theme song goes hard, so I gotta give it a 10. Here's Fishy Fishy. You play as a fish and eat more fish to win the game. Oh dear indeed. Flight Control, it's the same stupid game as the other plane game. You're guiding planes to land safely and not crash into each other. The best part of the game though was creating that one part from Breaking Bad. Flower Works, I'm not too sure what's going on here. You're playing as an alien trying to sprout your alien flowers on Earth to take it over, I assume. The main form of gameplay has you pointing the Wii Remote at the screen to grab hearts. And go nuts. All right, now we're talking fluidity. In this game, you play as water. You'll tilt the screen to guide the water throughout the stage and all the obstacles that come your way. Along your journey, you'll come across more water to recruit to your cause. Basically, the world has been taken over by evil ink pollution and the water's gotta save the day. It's a very simple game. You're just guiding water throughout the area. But bits of water can be left behind. And when it happens, you actually like Feel bad. Like this drop of water is a sentient being and has feelings you can hurt. No water left behind is what I say. It's a very relaxing time. The music is very ambient and chill. There's no time limit, no real threats. You're just moving water around. I can't wait for the next Smash Bros game. I hope they put water in it. So this is Frobot. The best way to describe this game is that if The Legend of Zelda and Tanks from Wii Play had a baby. Yeah, mechanically the game plays like tanks. Your Frobot can shoot missiles, lay down landmines, and moves like a tank. Alongside fighting enemies, there's puzzles you'll need to solve, items you'll need to find, and dungeons to explore. It's a very fun game that I'm surprised I've never heard anyone else talk about more. Maybe a lot of people just see the word Frobot and wrote the game off, which is a shame. Look at that little guy, Frogger. Although this ain't your grandpappy's Frogger, you'll have to hop on a square to light it up, jump on every square and you beat the stage. You still gotta avoid the cars though. There's a very strong bit trip vibe I'm getting from this. The music, the visuals, it's a very chill time. Oh no no, this guy's not cute. Frogger Returns. It's the traditional Frogger you know and love. Cross the street and try not to get run over. What else can I say? Fun fun mini golf. It's actually bad bad mini golf. It's mini golf. Sorry, I don't have a seven hour essay on it. I don't really know what the hell's going on with this one. Furry Legends. It's a side scroller where you play as a fuzzy ball and make it to the end of the stage. It's just a bad side scroller. There's nothing else noteworthy about it. 
the enemies are random creatures, the world is a bunch of random geometry to give off the illusion of fantasy, and I was very much not interested in continuing. Man, how far along are we now? Only at the G's? Jeez Louise, okay. Here's Gabrielle's Ghostly Groove. It's a rhythm game. I actually think this is Just Dance with a new skin. I have no idea what Gene Labs even is. You're just connecting strands of DNA from one disgusting organism to another. I'm not sure if you're supposed to be destroying or multiplying the virus. I don't know. And if the game doesn't want to be clear, I don't mind moving on. Ghost Mania featuring the ugliest kids I've ever seen. Shoutouts to these uggos. It's a puzzle game where you need to drop and match colored blocks. Very similar to Puzzle Fighter, just without all the charm. Ghost Mansion Party. It is literally Mario Party 9. All the players hop in a vehicle and hit the dice block that'll take you around the board with the spaces causing an event. After everyone has their turn, you play a lackluster and boring minigame. Out of all the Mario Parties to rip off, why this one? Yeah, this is Ghost Slayer. It's an on-rails sword slashing game. I'm surprised we haven't come across more of these. Everyone's natural instincts when they hold the Wii Remote is to swing it around like a sword. It's not a Wii Motion Plus game though, so the sword doesn't exactly follow your precise motions. But hey, as a mindless sword game, I guess it does the job. Am I gonna get in trouble for playing this? Girlfriends Forever Magic Skate. You're given some commands you need to follow with the Wii Remote in order to have this kid skate and not fall and get embarrassed, I guess. It's literally for three-year-olds. Gnomes, oh great, we're back to this series. It's a four-player battle minigame. Jump on the other gnome's heads and you win. Just play Super Mario War instead. Hey, you know, shout out to Wii Homebrews as well. Gods vs. Humans. I don't know what to do. They immediately gave me a novel's worth of instructions that I naturally skipped, and then I couldn't figure out what to do next. Partially my fault, partially yours for assuming I'd read all that. The final game in the M2 Rebirth series was Gradius Rebirth. Same Gradius gameplay but with new music, graphics, the same old spiel I already gave. Good times. Gravitronics. You start out by picking your character, and good gravy, you got some real winners to choose from. I obviously went with the hot anime babe. The game is just air hockey, or pong, or whatever the hell you call this game. Pretty simple, but apparently it supports up to eight players, with two people sharing a Wii Remote and Nunchuck combo. Sounds terribly awkward, but I give it kudos for being eight players. Alright baby, here's a banger. Grill off with Ultra Hand. Now before Nintendo made games, back in the 60s, they made toys. With one of their biggest hits being the Ultra Hand. It's an extendo hand that grabs things. It was the 60s. This was literally their Super Mario Bros. So to show some love and appreciation for their history, Nintendo released a game based off that exact toy. Food will drop on these grills and you need to pull them off whenever they're done cooking. Pulling it off too early or too late will dock you points. Definitely a simple game, but hey, it's fitting with the toy. Simple fun. Chock full of charm, catchy music, and a respectful bit of history. Groovin' Blocks. I think I like this one. It's a puzzle game where you need to match colors, but with the main gimmick being that it also acts as a rhythm game. I think if you make movements on the beat, it grants you extra points? I'm not exactly sure, but it feels super satisfying to use your big brain to both create combos and do it on a beat. I didn't do great at it, I don't have a big brain, I'm a stupid idiot, but maybe you would have a better go at it. Happy hammering, it's whack-a-mole, get your Chuck E. Cheese ass out of my face. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Let's get something wholesome going on. Happy Holidays Christmas. It's a Christmas card creator. You're given a bunch of less than stellar assets and you can create your own Christmas card. If grandma's got a Wii, you can send it to her via Wii Mail. Yeah, remember that. But hey, if you're someone who doesn't celebrate Christmas, no problem. 
That's right, you didn't think we'd do it. Happy Holidays Halloween! It's the same thing, but with Halloween decorations. Harvest Moon My Little Shop. You play as a kid who moved into town and you gotta set up your new life. You'll do farm work, meet villagers and NPCs to befriend, open small businesses, it's the Harvest Moon you know and love, but in bite-sized form. I think the game is actually a great introduction to the series if you're someone who's wanting to check out the games, but wasn't sure if it was for you. The visuals are also super charming. It's done in a paper style, but stylistically feels very different from Paper Mario. Which, hey, if you can stand out from the one paper game that exists, you're doing good. Disc Golf, it's stupid frisbee. I am not in college, nor from Los Angeles, so this game does not appeal to me. Although, you do play as a scarily attractive skunk, so I don't know how to feel. Heavy Fire Black Arms, it's an on-rails military shooter. Simple, but gets the job done. The game was so nice, they did it twice with special operations. Same exact game, but this time you're shooting your way through a different country. You know, I'll take it, man. It's simple fun. Alright, here's Helix. It's a rhythm game where you need to shake the Wiimote when it tells you to. Not the best game in the genre, but at least it's kinda trippy. Heracles Chariot Racing! Hot damn, we got our first Mario Kart ripoff! If you want Mario Kart, but worse, here you go. What is this? Heron Steam Machine? No. You're kidding me. You need to connect one end of the pipe to the other. This is literally like a mini puzzle you do in a full game, and it usually lasts like maybe two minutes. Who's the genius that thought this needed to be a full game? Hot Rod something, who cares? It's another Mario Kart ripoff with generic race cars. Hockey All-Star Shootout. You shoot a hockey puck and try and get it past the goalie. It's a game, I think. Home Sweet Home, now this game's actually kind of fun. You play as an interior designer for a real estate agency. The customers of the new home will tell you what kind of decor they like, and it's up to you to furnish that home to their liking. You're given free range to place things where you want, so there's definitely some freedom to the game. Like, this first house was for an older couple who like things simple, so I placed the TV right in front of the couch facing the wrong way. Sorry guys, it's my first day. Hoop World, it's a 3 vs 3 basketball game that's kinda good. Yeah, I, I don't know what they did to this game, but it plays surprisingly well. Kinda like Mario Hoops if I'm being honest. There's special abilities and power-ups to add some flair. A weird hidden gem for sure. This is Horizon Riders. You pick your character, such as Balfour... Oh my god. Then you're like auto-surfing while also shooting enemies? It feels like a fake video game you'd see in a sitcom or something. Like this is the game Josh is rocking on the game sphere, you know what I'm saying? This is Hubert Teddy Bear Winter Games. It is a bunch of garbage mini games meant for babies. Incoming! It's just so bad. It's a versus game where you need to master Angry Birds flinging, but it's like impossible to hit anything. Even the CPU was struggling to do it. I don't think they hit me once. The Incredible Maze. Once again, you tilt the Wii Remote to guide this ball to the end. Inkub! It's a god-awful tower defense game. You're placing weapons in a tube to protect this alien egg. So this right here is your gameplay screen. All of this is just for background scenery. It's so linear is the problem. The virus can only come in from one direction, and when the action finally happens, it's so visually bland. You are bad. Okay, so I think this game was supposed to be grouped in the A category, but I just forgot to do it. Its official name is A Monsteca Corral. The game is... Honestly? I have no idea what's happening. There's little creatures that you can guide. I thought it would be like Pikmin where I needed a group of them to take down an enemy, but that doesn't work. They're just running around. Hell, is this game even done loading? It looks half-baked. What is this? I genuinely spent a good while trying to figure out what to do without looking at a guide or a YouTube video, but I got nothing. This is a fever dream finding its way onto the Wii. 
Jam City Roller Girls. You pick your favorite punk rock babe like Texas and Dairyland. It's a bad racing game just with roller skates. You're able to shoulder check the other racers, which is pretty cool. This is just Mario Kart. Jelly Car 2. The game was made by Disney, and I'm not gonna do any research because that's just how I roll, but I'm gonna assume this has something to do with Kingdom Hearts, because in those games you get to create and control a jelly ship. In this game though, you simply have to make it to the end of the stage and through these obstacles. You're able to shrink and grow your car at will, with the cherry on top being that you have these jiggly jelly physics. I had lots of fun with this one, nothing else to really say. Good game. Alrighty, Jet Rocket. This game is literally just Super Mario Galaxy. Everything from the opening title music... ...to everything else. 3D platformer, check. Selecting a stage like this with the mission objective, check. Special abilities that make you fly specifically like this for a few seconds, check. Spin, dash, you check. So yeah, the game is definitely inspired by Mario Galaxy, but I don't want that to be viewed in a negative light, because as a whole, this game is really fun. The controls are really tight, the gameplay is satisfying, it surprisingly does everything right. If you want a budget Mario Galaxy, then Jet Rocket will hit the spot. Knock knock, who's there? Bejeweled. Bejeweled who? Bejewel Keepers Easter Island. They don't make much sense, but give me a break. Okay, this game really got on my nerves. Jungle Speed. It's a card game that I refuse to learn how to play. It's not based off of any other existing game to my knowledge. It is a 100% unique card game, with its own set of rules. We'll all flip over our cards that have random shapes on them. Sometimes you're supposed to grab this totem in the middle, and other times you're not. Other times, we're apparently dueling, but uh-oh, Hippo was too slow. You're given no indication on what you're supposed to do, and I am NOT going through the Jungle Speed Reddit with its three members. Just Jam Live Music Maker. Once again, I wasn't too sure what was going on. I think you just act as a DJ, having all these knobs that add different tracks to a song, where you can change its tempo and order or something. Here's what I created by simply pressing random buttons. Not the worst thing I've heard. So this game is pretty interesting. Karaoke Joy Sound, as you can imagine, is a karaoke game for your Wii. However, apparently it was an online service game where you would need to pay actual money to be put into a virtual karaoke room. Naturally, with Nintendo not supporting the Wii's online services anymore, which is a tragedy, I can't access it. Maybe you'd be able to sing along to actual songs, as opposed to what I had to do when you play in offline mode, and sing to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I ain't doing that, big man. Kung Fu Funk, it's Simon Says. Oh, dude, yes! I played the demo for this game all the time because I had no money and couldn't afford it. Kyoto K, I think? Star is your favorite deviant art drawing from 15 years ago. It's a side scrolling shooter bullet hell. You blast everything in your way, but you can also change the color of your shield to either red or blue. Whatever color shield you have, you'll be able to absorb the enemy's bullets that match that color to stay safe. Despite the deviant art drawings in the beginning, the in game assets are really pretty. I definitely consider this game a hidden gem. I never see it up there amongst the best bullet hell games or heck, even the best WiiWare games. This needs to be ported to Switch ASAP. The game is also multiplayer, which is always a plus in my books. La Mulana is a bootleg ass, wannabe ass Castlevania. Going around this dark forest whipping snakes and birds. Yeah man, they're so scary. God forbid we fight a skeleton man or something. Lead the meerkats. You need to lead a single meerkat to find other meerkats to lead them to... I, I guess to take over the world. <laughs> this is learning with the Puyus. As you might be able to expect, this is a learning game for babies. Because of that, I'm not gonna rip into it. Like, what do you want me to say? 
There's multiple episodes, but episode one is enough to sum up the whole franchise. You got these cute animals that talk to you, and you gotta use that big one-year-old brain to solve these puzzles like, which animals fit in this space? I know, I know, take your time. And if you get it wrong, they kill the animal in front of you so your child knows true fear. This is one of the most insane games I've ever played. Let's catch. It's kind of like let's play, but you're outside. So in this game, you talk to strangers and play catch with them. Where the game gets really saucy is when you realize that everyone you play catch with wants to trauma dump their entire life's lore onto you. Like this kid right here, seems innocent enough, but then he starts talking about how his dad is never home to spend time with him and, and how he gets beat when he messes up, like whoa whoa whoa. You'll also play with a woman who is considering leaving her boyfriend because you're such a good listener? Like bro, mind your own business and stop getting into people's lives. Can you imagine being a kid and getting this game because you just wanted to play catch with your Wiimote and all of a sudden you're a certified therapist? Let's create pottery. Jeez, I wonder what we're gonna do here. If you guessed, make pottery, then congratulations. It's pretty fun actually and kind of made me want to get into this in real life. Even if my pot was questionable. Light with two eyes. I couldn't get this game to work, so shout out to this YouTuber for showing it off. Honestly, I'm glad I didn't play it. Lilt line, baby! You use motion controls to guide this light through a maze. Don't touch the surfaces and you win. Lit. We got our first real horror game. You play as this kid and need to navigate through the stages without touching the darkness. Otherwise, the creatures from the shadows take you. I honestly couldn't get past the first classroom. I didn't know what to do. I used my flashlight, turn on the lamps, but even if the tiniest bit of dark touches you, it's over. Probably an alright game, but I wasn't interested in sticking around. Alright, so this game is called Little Tournament Over Yonder. It looks like a garbage-ass WiiWare game for some stupid random kids, right? But it kinda goes hard. You pick an army and go against another one on this chessboard. You then strategically move your soldiers to reach their king. When you cross paths with an enemy though, you're taken to a battle screen, where the game turns into a real-time fighting game. It's not that deep mechanically, but it's still really fun. And depending on what combinations you make with your soldiers, they'll be stronger. Like having buffs and support behind you. It is shockingly deep, and I wish it didn't look like a stupid baby game. Like, if you called this Final Fantasy Tournament or something, I wouldn't look like a complete idiot gushing over this. Lanpos. You're just putting balls into this case. They all have weird shapes and you gotta figure out what fits where. It is literally like those stupid mobile ads. You know the ones. Only 25% of people are smart enough to solve this. Lost Wins. This is a game I didn't spend a lot of time on, but I could tell it's something that's meant to be experienced over a long period of time. It's a side-scroller that utilizes all kinds of Wii gimmicks, but they clearly built up a world and lore to take in. From what little I played, I did have fun with it, and I'd consider this a hidden gem for sure. And hey, the game was apparently popular enough to warrant a sequel. Lost Winds, Winter of the Meliodas. Maboshi's Arcade. I don't know if this was a popular thing in Japan back in the day, but I have no real way of describing this game. You're throwing this ball around to hit objects, and that's it. I don't know if there's rules or even a real objective. This is like an ADHD trap that just exists purely to hear noise and see objects hit each other. There's even like an autoplay on the side like it's a Subway Surfer TikTok next to your Funny Family Guy clips. I have no clue what's happening, but I like it. Madstone. It's a puzzle game where you need to blow up blocks. Whoever blows up rocks the best wins. Hallelujah, it's mid. Alright, here's a game for all the annoying people out there. Magic Destiny Astrological Games. It's a game to teach you all about palm readings and tarot card readings. Probably talk about your astrology signs like that matters. It took a while, but here's a game that's actually trying to be a game. The Magic Obelisk. You control a light spirit named Popo and need to help guide this kid named Lucas to the goal of each stage, usually a giant tree. The gimmick, however, is that you can only move in the shadows. You're trying to rid the world of all evil or something like that. Along the way, you'll meet all kinds of wacky characters that may or may not die. 
It's a really charming game with a really cool gimmick. And I give it two and a half thumbs up. Magnetic -a Twist. It's this damn bubble shooting game. Magnetus. It's Tetris with magnets. I have no idea how to get combos or honestly how to even play it. I just kind of drop magnets and hope there's an attraction. You get it? Major League Eating the Game. You pick your lovely looking human and just eat. That's it. You flick the Wii Remote in the air and you watch him go to town. The more you eat, the more you'll be able to unlock special moves like <laughs> burping in your opponent's face, causing them to be disgusted and stop eating for a few seconds. This is one of the stupidest games I think I've ever seen. Nintendo looked at this and said, yeah, that's cool. Seal of approval. Manic Monkey Mayhem. You're battling other monkeys on a platform and throwing bananas at them while needing to dodge their projectiles. It's so bare bones and boring. After 10 seconds, you've already experienced everything the game has to offer. Sure, you have to learn how hard or soft to swing the Wii Remote, but once you find that sweet spot, there's no more challenge. You can also play local multiplayer, but I don't think any of your friends would ever want to play this. They would rightfully beat you up if you said, Hey guys, wanna play Monkey Manic Mayhem? Mart Racer. To put it simply, this game is like Mario Kart Double Dash, but good. You pick two random silly characters and need to run around this grocery store collecting specific ingredients. It's pure chaos. You can throw food at your opponents, crash into them, the graphics are cartoony, and the physics are all over the place, all in a fun way. And the controls are surprisingly tight. I'll be honest, this is a great game. We need a revival as soon as possible. Guy Fieri would also shamelessly steal this concept a few years later for his TV show. Justice for Mart Racer. Max and Magic Marker. He's the platformer. You play as Max, but also get to control his Magic Marker, which you can use to draw bridges, platforms, whatever you want, really. Now, I'm not certain, but I'm pretty sure I've played this game before. Like, I can't put my finger on it. Please let me know in the comments what this game is like. That's all I have to say. A fun platformer with cute visuals and a fun gimmick that would be better on the DS. MDK2. Now, this game was a little too good to be true as a WiiWare original. So I looked it up and yeah, MDK2 was released on the PS2 and Dreamcast just now being ported to WiiWare with no real changes or differences. That's not a knock on the game though, it's a very fun mid-2000s mascot game. I guess it's a third-person shooter, running around each stage and shooting anything that moves, along with all the funny 2000s cutscenes. It's silly, over the top, and most important, fun. Alright, now we're in business. Mega Man 9. During the Wii's lifespan, we get two new entries in the Mega Man series, Mega Man 9 and 10, respectively. The games were developed by Capcom and Inti Creates, the latter known for making some really fun side-scrollers akin to Mega Man, with titles like Gunvolt and Galgun, just to name a few. Mega Man 9 and 10 went back to basics, in almost every way possible, with the 8-bit NES look, sound, and control. As a kid, I was so confused when I saw these games, because I played Mega Man 7 all the time back in the day, and I remembered it looked really good on the Super Nintendo, then logging onto the Wii Shop channel and seeing its sequel looking like an NES game. The games are tons of fun, and that's all I really have to say without diving too deep into them. They are fun additions to the Mega Man series. Midnight Bowling. It's a garbage bowling game with a Florida nightclub aesthetic. There's also Midnight Pool, and I'm not even going to give that one the time of day. Without playing it, we already know what it's going to be. It's going to be a garbage pool game with a Florida nightclub aesthetic. Please stop shoving Florida in my face. Florida is the worst place I've ever been in my life. Military Madness Nectaris. What the hell kind of name is that? It's a top-down strategy sim that I have zero patience to play. I'm sorry. Mix Superstar. Okay, this one's kind of fun, but for stupid reasons. You take on the role of a DJ and need to create some sick tunes. You do this by throwing miscellaneous beats and sound effects on top of each other to make the number one club song. The game is very generous because you can pretty much mix anything with anything and the end result will be halfway decent. Moki Moki is another tilting the screen puzzle game. Next! 
Monochrome Racing. It's a shitty top-down racing game, but everything is in monochrome. AKA a reason to be lazy and not have color in your world. Hey, why stop there? Why not name the game Empty Racing and just have the players stare at an empty racetrack for hours? Moto Heroes. You ever play Trials? That dirt bike game where you need to lean forward or backward so you don't tip over? Well, here's the Wii version of it. Mouse House is a puzzle game. Move those balls, avoid the enemies, and collect the cheese. That's it. Mr. Driller! Mr. Driller W. You ever play Mr. Driller? Well, I haven't, but I do know it's an already established series. I'm not sure if there's a correct way to play this game. You're supposed to drill lower and lower while collecting oxygen supplies and avoiding the crates. It's tons of fun. Stringing together combos and seeing these things pop. I love how colorful and adorable the atmosphere is. And again, just seeing all those colorful patches of dirt pop constantly scratches that ADHD part in my brain. They sure were on the money when naming this game. Common Mr. Driller W. Oh my god, we have Muscle March. This was definitely someone's first exposure to the weirdness Japan has to offer. So in this game, you and many, many other muscular individuals are running through the streets of Japan causing mayhem. And nothing stands in your way. The person leading the charge will do a very sexy pose, and you'll have just a few seconds to match that exact pose so you can fit through the hole. The gameplay loop is pretty simple, but satisfying. The and the reaction times get shorter and shorter as other muscle folks get eliminated. This game is textbook Japanese weird. The silly music, silly characters, silly situations. If my mom walked in on me playing this game, I'd probably never be allowed another TV again. Hmm, I wonder what my aquarium is gonna be about. Ooh, surprise, it's a virtual aquarium. You pick your favorite fish, and you change the background scenery and the music. Give me ten dollars, that's basically what they said. I mean, damn, if you are really so irresponsible you can't have a fish tank in your real life house, and you need the Wii version of it, then here you go. At least they only did it once, right? Of course not, don't be stupid, this game needed a sequel. My Dolphin. You're just pressing buttons and watching a dolphin do tricks. Is this even fun? It's a virtual dolphin in a video game. Make it do something cool like drive a car or something. Who is impressed by a wee dolphin doing tricks? This is such a ripoff. Same with this next one, My Little Baby. This game is nuts. It starts off with a baby in the womb. Like, imagine this game is how you find out where babies come from. Then you get to customize your baby. Like, you can have it European, brown, and straight. Now, I was in shock when I first saw this, until I realized the color was referring to the hair, and the straightness is referring to the hairstyle. Apart from that, though, it's just a stupid baby simulator. Feed it, change the diaper, watch this ugly thing have the worst smile known to man. Who is honestly playing this stupid baby game? And is it wrong to say I want to punch this baby in the face? Because I'll do it. My planetarium, more like my god I'm so sick of these games. It's a virtual planetarium where you can look at the stars and constellations. Or, you know, maybe you can just go outside at night, that's just an idea. <laughs> At least if you're gonna do a virtual pet game, Pokemon is the right route to take. My Pokemon Ranch. The main function of this game though is for you to store your Pokemon from your copy of Diamond and Pearl. So that's cool. You got this big ranch full of your own Pokemon. You get to play mini games with them, take care of them, and watch them do miscellaneous activities. It's a pretty bare bones game, but hey, it's Pokemon. It just works watching them be cute and hang out. No problem too. No problem too. This is the mystery of White Rock Castle. It is a stupid eye spy game. You look for items and click on them. At least this one has a story, so if you're seven, it at least makes it kind of engaging. I apologize if it seems like I'm kind of speeding through some of these, but I am running out of steam, fellas. I started this journey with so much more energy and enthusiasm towards WiiWare. Even the garbage games I gave a bit of a chance. But at this point, I am so tired of seeing the same trash over and over again. But, hey, I'll push forward for you guys. Nevis Plus. 
It's another one of those mobile game ad games. Are you part of the 5% of people who can solve this puzzle? No, we're not doing this again. Newton vs. The Horde is a bit of a Home Alone kind of game. You use the Wiimote to set up Rube Goldberg traps to stop the zombies. Honestly, kind of boring and lame. Nikki Rockin' Ball. You tilt the Wii Remote back and forth to collect objects. This is some rockin' ball torture. Nick's Quest Kindred Spirits. The game starts off with a cutscene, and if you try to skip it, you get, like, berated. Do you already know the story of Nyx and Icarus? Yeah, I played Brawl, I know all about Kid Icarus. The game is just really slow, ugly, and overwhelming. Onslaught is the first real FPS on this list. Yeah, it's not on rails, you actually get to move around. This kind of feels like Halo on Wii. You're blasting at aliens and... that's about it. You can't jump or melee or any of the first person shooter tropes that have become standard at this point. It's a very bare bones game, but I do give it points for trying to feel like an actual FPS. Overflow is kinda dumb. You got this leaky faucet, and I guess you're supposed to direct the water into this tube? The instructions are very clear. It says drag and drop a plank here. So I try to do that, and I'm told I can't. If I can't trust Overflow on Wii, then who can I trust? Overturn, though, is a bit better of an experience. It's a robot fighting game. You pick your robo and then fly around this map shooting at each other. Honestly, it's got some nice speed to it, so the combat's fun. It's a very strong 6 out of 10. Paint Splash is Microsoft Paint on the Wii. It's very limited and bad. What do you think of my drawing? It's a chicken. Palurikio! You fling this ball around the stage and collect items. It's got the Angry Birds gameplay, meaning this would be much more enjoyable on your phone. Paper Wars Cannon Fodder. Now, I'm already a bit tilted with the late 2000s epic gamer text, missions with a Z and calling anything badass. You're just shooting bombs at soldiers. Having the paper aesthetic though means that the explosions and impact don't feel satisfying. They just kind of disappear. Party Fun Pirate. So you got this pirate stuck in a barrel and you have to stab knives through it in hopes that you're not the one that punctures through his heart. This is insane, why is this on Wii? Honestly, I wanted to see him get stabbed, but it took way too long, and I honestly got bored before I could see it. Hey, I got a lot of games to go through, I ain't got all day to spend doing this. Oh, but if you thought that game was inappropriate for the Wii, here's Pearl Harbor Trilogy. A game about the attacks on Pearl Harbor during World War II. You got these comic panel cutscenes, and the level starts off with a guy saying, oh my god, it's the Japanese, they're everywhere. This game is on the Nintendo Wii! It's so tone deaf. Penguins and friends. Hey, that's my fish. So you got this beautiful selection of penguins to choose from. Do I want the brain dead penguin or the cocaine penguin? So many choices. When the game starts, you're just jumping on panels in a turn based manner. Why? What's the objective? I don't know. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Whoa, an actual game! There were actually three Phoenix Wright games released on WiiWare, all of which were on the DS ported to Wii, hence why sometimes you get the two screens. I've heard these games are really fun, and I didn't really have time to really deep dive into this series in the middle of this massive video, but I've heard from everyone that they're all great, and having it on the big screen is definitely a plus. Pop-Up Pursuit. It's Mario Party, but with paper. Call that Paper Mario Party, which actually seems like a genius idea. Seriously, could you imagine a Mario Party game in the Paper Mario universe and all those insane minigames that could happen? Quick, Nintendo, steal this idea before anybody finds out! Pinocchio's Puzzle. It's a goddamn puzzle game. Literally a puzzle game. Did I do it? Did I win? Alright, this is some pirate game, and if they're not willing to put the name of it on the title screen, then I don't care enough to remember. You sail the seven seas, collect treasure, and shoot enemy ships down. I think... Maybe. I guess not- oh, there it goes. Alright, Pit Crew Panic is one of the strangest games I've ever played. You control a crew of super hot Wii girls to act as your pit crew on a racetrack. The first car that showed up was... A giant toilet. And it's up to you to spin the toilet around to find the rusty spots and assign a girl to each area in a timely manner to clean it and make it spotless. These girls just be staring at you. Go clean this toilet! 
pl platishan pl twist and paint. So here's literally what happened. I loaded my little guy with a jetpack onto these colorful panels, and three seconds later it got swarmed with rocks and black holes, and I got a game over. Good game, really. No, great job. Planet Fish. You control a submarine and shoot bubbles to collect small fish to power your sub? Well, that's not cool. We're the bad guy. I don't support this. Planet Pachinko. Oh, it's just a pachinko machine on Wii. Yeah, that's what I thought. But the game is actually a platform shooter? This is so anxiety inducing. What is going on? My guy is jumping like he's on the moon and shooting objects while other objects are flying around. This feels broken. And then all of a sudden I'm playing as this guy in a wheelchair. Like this is what happens in my dreams when I eat ice cream before bed. Play with birds. Uh, I don't want to see their kind of playing. Oh, and there we go. Pregnant bird. So we play as a baby bird exploring the city. There's a poop button, so that's kind of cool. Apart from that, uh... Yeah, this sucks. Pokemon Rumble, now we're talking. Me and my friends used to play this game for hours. In this world, all the Pokemon are wind-up toys. You travel around each stage fighting hordes of other Pokemon to become the best, and win the Pokemon Royal Rumble. The game is mainly a dungeon crawler. Every Pokemon can learn up to two different attacks at a time. You can go around and smack the bejesus out of other Pokemon, and sometimes they join your party. You can switch between all of them on the go, which is cool. Yeah, it's super simple, but it's still loads of fun. The best way to play it was obviously with three other friends. I love Pokemon Rumble. This series needs a revival. Pong Toss Pro. It's beer pong on Wii. This is so stupid. You could just throw plastic balls in cups in real life. What alcoholic child needs their fill in video game form? Pool Revolution Q Sports. Do I really have to play this? This is pool, but without the other balls. Brother, you had one task when making this game, and you royally screwed it up. Pop. Yep. Yes, just what you do. You literally just pop bubbles. Pop them, drop them, same game. That's kind of a weird name. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's the same game. How did they know? Dude, I'm so tired and mentally spent. I, I just don't care anymore. Pot Pori, stupid name. Like, what do you want me to say about this? You're shooting balls in this pond with ducks. It's like, who's playing this trash? This is not fun. Oh, here's Protothea. It's a space shooter, kinda. Here, look at this gameplay for three seconds. All right, there you go. You got the whole experience. Pub darts. What do you think? Next. Puka's kissing game. So there's this girl who I guess loves kissing people. This guy doesn't want it. However, Puka is relentless and won't stop until she gets some sweet kisses. We basically play as God, interacting with the environments through quick time events and doing whatever we can to help Puka reach her victim. Whatever, at least this one's kind of fun. Cute atmosphere, art style, and simple fun gameplay. Here's Rabbids. Nowadays, the Rabbids are so famous they're able to have their own crossover RPG with Mario, but here they are at humble beginnings, stuck inside a Wii remote for your enjoyment. You can shake the remote and watch them fly around, press buttons and see them go down in real time. It's pretty basic and loses its charm within five minutes, but whatever, it is still cute and I know a lot of people really have nostalgic memories for this game. Racers Crazy Arena Zylans. It's just the battle mode in Mario Kart. Drive around, shoot the enemies, find items, and sometimes try to find the enemies. Yeah, I think we're done here. Oh baby, don't even talk to me until I've had my morning Rage of the Gladiator. The simplest and best way to describe this game is that it's medieval punch-out with swords. You're in the first-person perspective doing combat, where you can hit the opponent with a left or right strike, and need to time your dodges so you don't take damage. It's honestly really solid and a great alternative if you're someone who just needs more punch-outs. And the fantasy aesthetic really lets you get into more wild and creative scenarios. A really good game. Rainbow Island's Towering Adventure. You need to platform upwards and can create rainbows to act as bridges. Wait, didn't we already play a game exactly like this? Yeah, Kokoto Platformer. Literally the same concept of going up and creating platforms. Why of all the games you choose to rip off, it's this one? You deserve to have rocks thrown at your head. Real Fishing Challenge is a real boring fishing game. 
But hey, what do I know? They made two of them. Retro City Rampage is a game that my friend had, and I thought it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. It's essentially an 8-bit GTA. You play as a thug and go around causing mayhem. You can steal cars, beat up citizens, take out cops, all done in a top-down NES style. To show you how stupid I was as a kid, I genuinely thought that this was an old game from the 80s. Definitely scratches that GTA itch, full of absurd moments and references that I can't help but smile at. Robin Hood and the Return of Richard, or the Return of Dick if we want to be silly. It's an on-rail shooter. It's not Jesus! Uh, yeah, it's, it's not on-rail shooter, who cares? Robocalypse Beaver Defense. It's like a real-time strategy game where you need to place these robots around the forest and take out hordes of enemies. It's kind of like that Final Fantasy game from earlier, but worse. Robox! No, 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 not the other one. You play as this robot and... I don't know, do things. Who gives a shit? This game sucks. Rock and Roll Climber. This game is quap. Yeah, remember that. You control a ragdoll character and need to figure out the physics to climb this wall. My only problem is that it starts you too close to the floor, and when you touch it, you automatically lose. Like, there should be some leeway for me to figure out this game before just letting me get an instant game over. Rubik's Puzzle Galaxy Rush. I... I don't know how to play this game. You place this arrow pad on the platform, and I guess you gotta get this green square into this other one? Like, just why not make a virtual Rubik's Cube? It, don't get me wrong, it would also suck, but at least I'd know what's going on. Now, if you've been watching this so far, some of you might be asking yourselves, Hey, wait, there haven't been any Japanese-exclusive WiiWare games. And, if you're thinking that, you're right. I noticed it way quicker than I did, because it wasn't until I was completely finished with this video to realize that I left them out completely. So we're now at the Japan round, where we're just gonna go through every Japanese WiiWare exclusive I was able to get my hands on. First game is 3 degrees Celsius. We're already not off to a fantastic start with this stupid touch the colors game. No matter what language we speak, this is universal garbage. Oh Jesus, here we go. Boku mo Sekai wo Sukutai Battle Tournament. I think this is some kind of JRPG. We got anime characters, a level, and lots of yapping. Is it good? How do you expect me to know? Boku wa Plarail Yutenshi Shinkansen and Jokiki Kansha Hen. I, I can't apologize any harder. I'm sorry I'm so bad at this. You're a Japanese train conductor. Japan loves trains so much, I could imagine this was a big hit. You can control the speed, the speaker, and even the windshield wiper. Every train simulator game I've played from Japan always plays it straight. Like, kids really are dead set on becoming a conductor when they're young, I love that. Shindochu Paul no Daiboken. It's an 8-bit side-scroller made by Sega. You play as a cowboy, and shoot these guys wearing moose heads. Moosen heads? Meese? You're also collecting apples. Some are good, some are rotten. What does this mean? Again, I'm in the dark. This is definitely a Mario castle, and these are Mario bricks, and the Mario question mark. Discipline. I got a long text crawl of some guy talking. I think this is the entire game. Testing your discipline, seeing how long you hold out before turning it off. Fantastic tambourine. I love cute chibi art, and I hope we get to see more in these Japanese exclusives. It's a pretty basic rhythm game. Shake the Wiimote when these little smiley faces pop out of the pipe. Pretty basic stuff. Oh my good lord, Hachi One Diver. Is she buff? I have no idea. It's a visual novel. Great, that works perfectly for me. Hajite Block Rush. You play as this blue icon and bounce this ball to shatter the cubes. Again, so many of these games would just work better as a mobile game. Hirameki Card Battle, Mekaruka. Oh, there's that abnormally amazing art again. I don't know what's going on though. It's a tabletop battle game, but I just move my characters to random blocks and sometimes I win, and other times I lose. Ivy the Kiwi. Now, this one was actually a game released on the DS, even in North America, so why we never got the Wii version is beyond me. This little bird is dumb and just walks aimlessly, so it's up to you to create bridges and platforms with this magical vine. It's simple and fun. Definitely better on the DS, though. John Ken Party Paradise. It's rock, paper, scissors, but with hammers also. This completely throws off my strategy and dynamic of the game. 
Jintori Action Taiko Kenshi Karokuri Shiro Nanazo. I hopped around as this little dumpling head girl while this bamboo stared at me. And I got stuck. Kaku Ugoku Sukumaru Sensei. It's MS Pain. We didn't need all those words for that. <sighs> Kanken Mina de YY Kanji. No. I believe this is another trivia game or kanji test since kanji is in the title. Yep, you're right. I didn't do too good. Kapakun to Asabo Kapakun no Otan Shimaki. This is humiliating me in so many ways. I promise I'm not that dumb. I'm trying my best. It's a basic educational game. You got this cute story with cute characters and cute dialogue, probably. Then you play mini games that grow your little brain, matching the animals, etc. Kente TV, we Mina de Gotochi quiz battle. They weren't lying. It's a quiz battle. Kentoshi Fury Fury Boxing. You know those Rock'em Sock'em robot toys that you just mash the buttons until you knock out the opponent off their stand? Well, congrats! You've already played Kentoshi Fury Fury Boxing. You can dip and dodge, but swinging the remote wildly tends to work best. Kodomo Kyoki Terabi Wi Aoi Oshan. Just like the title, I'm at a complete loss for words. This little guy is yelling at me from the TV and I can't move because I'm probably suffering through sleep paralysis. He then jumps out of the TV and rearranges my room. I is this a game? Mina de Asobo, Koinu de Kiruin. So already you've won me over with these adorable dogs, but it also helps that this game is really good. It's a puzzle game where you need to try and connect as many matching colors as possible. A doghouse will eventually drop of the same color. Having it drop on the color allows the combo to add up. And it's honestly super satisfying to see. A great puzzle game that I feel like would have done great over here. Why do we get so much garbage but ignore a hidden gem in plain sight? Mina de Taizen Puzzle, Shanghai Wii. Now, this is a puzzle game I have zero idea how to play. I genuinely don't know what's going on. Mina no Theater Wii. I guess this is an online only game because after booting it up I was immediately brought to an error screen. Oekaki Logic. It's another art game, I think. Osu Exercise Doju. You have a karate sensei giving you exercise tips. It's kind of like a digital class. He'll tell you to do a pose and hold it for a few seconds. Things like balancing on your toes. It's stuff like this that'll probably turn you into a hardened karate master. Also, we get to see the dogs for free? Okay, here is something that genuinely shocked me to my core that we did not get this. Pokemon Fushigi no Dungeon. Ikuzo Arashi no Bokenden. Name might sound confusing, but these are essentially Wii versions of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. There's three games in total, one for blue, red, and green Pokemon, respectively. You pick two starters and explore some mysterious dungeons. The models are ripped straight from Pokemon Rumble, which I think is great. If you got those assets already, why not make more games with them? Seriously, this is blowing my mind. How were there Wii versions of these underrated titles and Nintendo just didn't bring them over? Absolutely top tier games. It's still not too late to release these. Pogosuka Racing. It's another word for Mario Kart clone. Next! Popling the magic crayon. I, uh, immediately got stuck. This crayon was not working. Does it need to be recharged? I don't know how these silly magical world works. Princess AI Monogatari. Whoa, this is some pretty impressive art. Wow, yeah, so is that. This is, uh, this is a virtual manga, isn't it? Okay, pretty cool in theory. I don't know, really. I'm both incredibly angry and incredibly intrigued at the same time with this. Oh, Jesus. Here's the longest one yet. Raku Raku Kinin Apli Wii Kinenka no Isha Go Oshiro Nanako de Yamaru Hoho. Just like me, this game is a bunch of rambling. This lady is talking to you, but she might as well be talking to a brick wall since I don't speak Japanese. I eventually did find out, though, that this is a game learning about how to stop smoking. So that's fun for the kids. I'ma just call this one Sugar Bunnies. There's more words after that, but no, Sugar Bunnies. It's a super cutesy and kawaii Animal Crossing clone. Talk to these cute villagers and go to the cute cupcake shop. It's just so sweet and precious. Tokyo City Nights. The concept is pretty interesting. You play as this guy who had a wild night in Tokyo and wakes up not remembering anything. So you have to retrace your steps and figure out just what the heck happened. I'm pretty sure The Hangover came out around this time, so this game is essentially a video game version of that movie. 
I'm sure the dialogue is half the fun of this game, but since I can't read it, I couldn't get the full experience. Uno Kids, Okigaru Uno Training. I don't know, bro, there's shapes and stuff, who cares? Yomi Kikasi Asobe Wii. It's another virtual fairy tale, just page after page of story that does have some cute art. So if you're a lazy parent who doesn't want to read your child a bedtime story, then this game has got you covered. And that covers all the Japanese exclusive games I could get my hands on. I'm sure there are a few I missed here and there, but they either just wouldn't load or I couldn't find them entirely. Yeah, lost WiiWare media. All in all, I'm surprised there were this many exclusives. Like, some of them sucked for sure, but not any worse than the garbage they did translate and release. But now, back to our English-speaking nonsense. Alright guys, Sandy Beach. Now strap yourselves in because this one is super exciting. In this game, you build sandcastles. I know, I know. How did they manage to get this kind of insane premise on the Wii? Next game I'm already skeptical about, it's called Save the Furries. Luckily it's not what you think. You see we got these little aliens that auto walk around the stage, where it's up to you to build bridges and interact with the stage however you can, in order to help these little fellows reach the end goal. It's honestly not half bad. The aliens walk at a pretty fast pace so you gotta use that big brain quickly to make sure they don't go kaput. Woohoo, now we're talking. Sexy poker. You start off by picking your favorite anime girl, after that you play cards. Where naturally, the more you win, the more clothes the girl takes off. Oh my gosh, you took off her hat? I think I might pass out. Now the only question on anyone's mind is how new do these girls actually get? Well, I don't know. I kept going over 21 like an idiot and she put on her hat. Shadow play. You play with shadows. Seriously, I don't even have to write half the script. Okay, I'll admit. Shutanto Evolutionary Mayhem sure caught my attention. I'm not sure if it was the half-naked man, the textureless lizard, or the monkey. The game is, I guess, Space Invaders? But instead of a spaceship, you play as a monkey and you're throwing mud pies at trees, giant bugs, and hey, there's that lizard again. I'm thoroughly enjoying myself, believe it or not. Silver Star Chess. We're playing chess with an anime girl, but if she's not taking off her clothes, then who cares? From the same company as the last game, we got Silver Star Reversi. Huh, is the anime girl gonna get naked here? Nope, I didn't think so. Snail Mail. I love that already. We start off with a Star Wars text crawl that I think is a lawsuit waiting to happen. The game itself is like a mobile game. You move forward and need to either dodge left or right and blast these obstacles in your way. Then I got stuck and naturally turned it off. Sneezies, that's another one of the dumbest names ever. Basically, I think we're sneezing on these little creatures in bubbles. Now our sneeze spray has a bit of a spread, so it's our goal to patiently wait for these bubbles to bunch up together and then sneeze on them to get a big combo. I kind of love it mainly because it's a game that forces you to be patient. Like, don't get me wrong, it's a game easy enough for a four-year-old with apple slices up his nose to play, but I do like it. Snowboard Riot. It's a downhill racing game featuring edgy anime characters. Yeah, you won't like it when the cartoon OC crosses his arms. It's not half bad. You got power-ups like rockets to blast at your opponents. There's also flips and tricks you can do for extra points. Not super deep, but still gets the job done. Snowpack Park. The best way to describe this game is that it's Animal Crossing, but in Antarctica, and all of the villagers are penguins. This one in particular is currently recovering from a crack addiction, I guess. Yeah, you get to befriend penguins all with unique personalities and help them out. Although, they don't talk. Only the one in recovery does that. So it kind of makes your character feel like a psychopath, living amongst the penguins he can't even socialize with. Soccer Bash is a game that you might think is a lame soccer game, but it's goddamn breakout. Like, why would you do this? Waste of time. Next. Now the next game, Soccer Up, is that garbage soccer game I was expecting with the last one. But I'll give this one props for being all-inclusive, because you can be on Team North Korea. It's Mario Strikers, but worse in every way. Well, alright, Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1. 
Yeah, this is an official sequel and addition to the 2D Sonic the Hedgehog series. Just like the Rebirth series, Sonic 4 was meant to act as a throwback to the good old days. No more of that 3D nonsense. Back to basics like everyone remembered. And just like a lot of those titles, Sonic 4 absolutely hits it out of the park. The big difference is that we're playing as modern Sonic as opposed to classic. Meaning this Sonic is able to use the homing attack to latch onto objects and combo enemies to move forward. It's a smart addition, since most kids who might have come across this this game may have only grown up on the new 3D Sonic games. It does everything right, I can't recommend it enough. Sadly though, Episode 2 wasn't released on WiiWare for whatever reason, and Episode 3, well, that just never happened. But we'll always have Episode 1. Cute animations, fun music, fun gameplay, it's another throwback done well, and most importantly, hasn't been oversaturated yet. Dude, I'm not kidding when I say Space Invaders Get Even is probably now in my top 5 favorite WiiWare games of all time. And what sucks is that I didn't even know about this game until working on this video. So in this Space Invaders game, you actually get to play as the aliens. You control the mothership and send down your cute little pixel army to destroy the city. You have an attack menu down here that does different types of attacks. Be it a scatter attack, coming together for a drill attack, every single one has unique properties that all affect things differently. For example, the drill attack doesn't work on the forces on the ground. You're given certain targets to destroy, but there's no harm in destroying literally everything else in your way. The game fundamentally acts like Pikmin, if I'm being kinda honest. You have limited resources and can throw your aliens wherever you want, but when they're not by your side, you can't attack and are susceptible to damage. This is honestly such an amazing game, I could have played this for hours more. Space Trek No, your internet connection isn't broken, the cutscene just looks that bad. The game itself is a boring Star Fox clone. You fly around and shoot... things. I'm not sure what exactly, but I didn't care enough to find out. This one is, uh... I don't know, it doesn't say on the title screen either, so screw it. You're shown a pattern at the top of the screen and you need to make the same exact image here. Is this a game for actual babies? Like, I'm not gonna judge it if it is, but I need to know. Spog's Racing. Another Mario Kart clone. And it's boring. Spot the Differences is an underrated JRPG. Haha, <laughs> gotcha! It's another dumb game for babies. Spotting the differences between two images. I feel like I didn't need to say that. Star Soldier R. Can I just say I love random letters being thrown at the end of titles? Call me Connor the Waffle O. Anyway, the game's a top-down shooter that I have literally nothing to comment on. It exists in the WiiWare library. Step Up, the only game so far in this list to require the Wii Balance Board. The game is Wii Fit Guitar Hero. You need to time your steps with the beat, and honestly, it's kinda cool. I can only imagine what Through the Fire and Flames would look like on this. Grandma's gonna be like Usain Bolt on this thing. Stone Keep Bones of the Ancestors is a first-person fantasy action game, but a really bad one. I think Skyrim was almost out around this time. It's just bad Skyrim. Like, look at this combat. Look at this and tell me it looks like fun. <laughs> Alright, maybe a tiny bit. Stop Stress A Day of Fury. So if this is a pretty therapeutic game, you play as a guy who has the worst anger issues ever, and needs to cause destruction to his own property to feel better. Your first mission has you being angry at your alarm clocks for waking you up, which hey, that's pretty relatable, we've all been there. So you have to go around and smack them all with your slippers. And hey, while you're at it, this shelves a bit of an eyesore, get out of here. You got bugs that are constantly attacking you, and who could forget the classic Kraken in the toilet. Yeah, no wonder this guy is stressed out. I honestly love it. This guy is so petty and angry at everything. He's a character fueled by pure petty rage. Ah, now I know all of you internet enjoyers love this. Strong Bad's cool game for attractive people. Strong Bad is a character from the series Homestar Runner, one of the first online comedy animation series. I've unfortunately never seen Homestar Runner. I know absolutely nothing about this series, apart from the fact people really like it. I just didn't have internet back in those days. But even though I've never watched it, I still had a lot of fun playing the game. There are five games in this Homestar Runner series, all of which simply let you explore the world and talk to all of the characters you love. The gameplay has you playing a bunch of micro games similar to WarioWare, each of them having tons of charm and go different routes stylistically. Honestly, it's insane how deep these games are. Like, this isn't Spongebob or something. It's an online cartoon series that has five really good games on WiiWare. 
Like, if you told me there was an AVGN game on the Wii when I was 13, I would have lost my mind. Stunt Cars is a racing game. Yep, cool, next. Sudoku Challenge. Man, get this smart person game out of here. Who the hell knows how to play Sudoku? Probably people who actually did their homework and know how to divide fractions. Not people like me. Swords and Soldiers. I couldn't get this game to work, so here's the game's trailer. It looks like a pretty alright strategy game. Tales of Bearsworth Manor. My name is Kina. I don't have a dad, and my mom is really, really scary. Alright, depression right out of the gate. I like it. I'll be honest, I have no idea how to explain this game. It's really fun, don't get me wrong, but I'm at a loss for words, so I'm gonna use my lazy idiot card and just read the Wikipedia page. Players use the remote to throw paper bears into the landscape of a picture book on the screen to manipulate the on-screen environment in order to gather all the red candies. I couldn't have said it better myself, Steven Wikipedia. There's also a sequel. Tales of Elastic Boy is another side-scroller where you play as a ball and roll around. You can also- oh yeah, I can do that. Tales of Monkey Island's Chapter 1 through 5. Monkey Island is a classic point-and-click adventure game. People have been playing that since the days of when your computer looked like this and your mouse icon looked like this. Personally, these games are not my cup of tea, but if you want to immerse yourself back into the world of Monkey Island with its delicious plot and pointing gameplay, you won't be disappointed. Target Toss Pro Bags. It's cornhole. Now every redneck has played this extensively. You toss your bags into the hole. You can't make it any simpler. We just need your shirtless uncle out here yelling obnoxiously loud with a beer in his hand, and it would be perfect. They also made a lawn darts game, which is literally the same exact game. Same controls, same animations, everything. And you didn't think we'd notice. Alright, Tetris Party. Now, I loaded this up thinking how could they possibly mess up Tetris. They do mess it up. With pointer controls. Yeah, you have to aim your Wiimote at the screen to guide the blocks. It's Tetris, but worse. Texas Hold'em Poker. A poker game that lacks any potentially revealing anime girls. So, what's the point really? The Three Musketeers won for all. Now, do my eyes deceive me, or am I playing a dollar store, 99 cent, great value version of Beautiful Joe? It's a side-scroller with some really stylistic background scenery and art style. The gameplay itself is very underwhelming. You're collecting coins and swinging your swords at enemies that I don't think are hostile. But hey, at least it looks kinda nice. Through Space. You're controlling these Tetris pieces in hyperspace. You have to rotate them around so they can fit in these holes. Simple, but fun. I think Tiki Towers is so stupid. Controversial take, I know. You need to create these poles so these stupid monkeys can reach their destination. It sucks. I'm sorry, monkeys. TNT Racers is a stupid racing game. Toki Tori is Captain Toad if you absolutely can't stand that little mushroom-headed freak. You platform around a stage collecting eggs, but you can't fly or jump, so it's a smart person game. Oh, Jesus Christ, Tomona Sanar. Just by the name, I know we're in for some weird Japanese nonsense. So we play as a faceless businessman who's late for work. You gotta press buttons at the right time to avoid obstacles. There's no rhyme or reason as to what's going on. Sometimes he chooses violence, other times parkour. It is once again a quintessential Japanese game. This man is so dedicated to his job. I've been late to a few before, and I was not willing to fight dinosaurs to make it on time, I'm sorry. Tori Bash. Definitely a game I like conceptually, but its execution is a bit boring. It's essentially a turn-based ragdoll fighting game. You can move these little fellas' limbs all around to do an attack that'll BOOM! Yeah, it's satisfying. But it takes a long time to get here, and being turn-based takes a lot of that possible ragdoll chaos out of it. Trenches General is another real-time strategy game where you play as the... Ugh. Oh, oh god, next, next. Here's a sports game. It's a trilogy, and they're all bad. So bad, in fact, I use this time to protest and not take part in the event. Take that. Tumblebugs 2. I'm not sure where the first game went, but I won't question a good thing. It's goddamn this game. You're shooting colorful balls to match other colorful balls, and you win. TV Show King. Oh, oh they're doing the meme. The, po the pointing thing. This is just a trivia game. Honestly though, I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. I love pointless trivia. I have filled my head with more useless information than things that'll actually benefit my life. Some of these questions though, 
there's something else. What is a common way for people to add color to their houses? Turn off the lights. What do you mean that's wrong? My favorite of all though is, which of these office supplies is a writing instrument? Like, are we really asking this? Is this a game for literal babies? There was also a TV show King 2. Same weird host, same basic questions, but in the sequel you could at least choose a category and not just have a mishmash of random questions like, what month does Cinco de Mayo happen? Unreal. Ubongo, another make the shapes fit in this bigger shape game. Next, Uno. Everyone has Uno, dipshit. It came free with your fucking Wii. Urbanics, you play as this cute plow. I thought the game acted like Snake, because when you move, you drop these little balls, and if you run into them, you blow up. So I thought I had to trap this evil truck in my trap, but no. He escaped and I still blew up. VIP Casino Blackjack. Keep gambling, kids! You statistically will win! I mean, someone has to, right? Vampire Crystals. This absolutely looks like the most Wii game ever. It's a survival shooter. Zombies come in hordes and you need to blast them away. It's not the deepest game in the world, but works fine enough for a cheap arcade game. The Very Hungry Caterpillar's ABCs. Like the book? How on earth do you make a game out of this? S. Salami. Okay, that's how. Violin Paradise. It's very reminiscent of a bootleg taiko drum game. You need to move the Wiimote up and down this pattern, all while holding either the A button when the line is blue, or B when it's red. It's no Guitar Hero or nothing, but I had a good time. I can be entertained by dumb baby games, sue me. Viral Survival. You take control of this weird little guy and need to collect other weird little guys to create a really long little guy. There's other evil little guys though that cause damage and take away points from your high score, but if you collect power-ups you're able to fight back and keep the game going. It's really fun. Every round will last maybe a minute or two depending on how well you can juke the enemies. Good stuff. Voodoo Dice. So this one is kinda interesting. You play as a dice and need to roll around to land on a number that matches whatever dice is blocking your path. Meaning you need to figure out what route to take to land your dice on the number. Or if you're like me, aka stupid, you just kinda roll around like crazy until it eventually works itself out. WarioWare DIY, hallelujah! It's WarioWare. Quirky, fun, charming, and cute. The first game I played had Wario Man helping out people who needed to pee. That's just so beautiful and artistic. The big thing about this game though was that players were able to create their own micro games and share them with the world. Unfortunately, we live in a post Nintendo online service world and instead I got to wallow in my own sadness. Warman Tactics. This game is doo doo. We get another cutscene in 144p and then we need to select every single action for this soldier to do. Click move forward. Move forward again. Move forward. And then I got shot because I couldn't see the enemy and got a game over. Water Warfare. It's a team shooter. Before Splatoon, we had Water Warfare. Probably playing with people was the best way to go, but since I couldn't do that, here's footage of someone else playing it. It looks like a good time. Wild West Guns. Oh, who could have guessed we'd be shooting things next? Word Searcher. Now this... This is completely unnecessary. My grandpa would play this in the morning newspaper. You offer nothing! World of Goo. Oh yeah, now this is a quintessential WiiWare game. I feel like if you never played World of Goo, did you even own a Wii? It's a simple game. You use these gooey balls, gross, and need to create bridges and ladders to reach a pipe. You want to use as little of the gooeys as possible for a higher score. This is WiiWare at its best. Simple and fun. Xmas Puzzle. No! No, we are not doing this again! Yard Sale Hidden Treasures. Oh, thank God it's another I Spy game. We went far too long with that one. You, Me, and the Cubes. I don't really understand this game. You throw two people on a cube and just hope they don't fall off. Is it physics based? Is it random? I have no clue, and I honestly did not care. Yummy, yummy cooking jam. You're creating food and delivering orders as fast as you can. It's not as fun as that Diner Dash game from earlier, nor as hectic, but I don't know, it's here. When was the last time Dracula ate hot dogs? Does he even know what this is? Zombie Panic in Wonderland. No jokes, no cap, no nothing. This game is just good. 
You play as a little ninja boy and need to defend... No, I'm sorry. Destroy this town that's been overrun with zombies. It's kind of like Space Invaders. You can only move left and right, being equipped naturally with a machine gun, grenades, and other military-grade weapons. You can blow up buildings, do this flip, which is completely unnecessary, but it looks cool. And it's your job, nay, your life's purpose to destroy every single thing in sight until this city is just an empty void of nothing. A plus, fantastic game, highly recommend. Zombie. Bro, what are we doing shooting zombies with a slingshot? This sucks! But now, we have finally reached our final game. The last game in this long and tiring WiiWare journey. Will it be worth it? Will the final game be everything we hoped for, perfectly summing up the WiiWare library? This is Zoo Disc Golf. It's awful. And wow, just like that, we have essentially covered all 435 WiiWare games. Give or take, I don't know, I already made the thumbnail and made the intro. I ain't going back to count all of them or change nothing. So, what are my thoughts on WiiWare? Now that I can confidently say I've pretty much played every game. Well, there was definitely more garbage than genuinely good games. But even with the bad games, I honestly had so much fun my entire way through. Sure, my tone and recollection of some of them may have sounded harsh, but there's a certain charm with these games. Games that needed to pass the Nintendo inspection, games that felt like they needed the motion control gimmicks, games that saw success of titles like Wii Sports and Wii Play. Some games were able to break through the mold and make an impact, being fondly reminisced upon all these years later for their joy and charm. While others also have the same infamy, but for opposite reasons, being such an odd title on the console that you can't help but bring it up. Whatever reasons, I'll always look back on WiiWare with nothing but positive memories and nothing has been able to really top it since. The Switch eShop is constantly being filled with garbage that somehow gets past Nintendo's quality control, or is just some ported mobile game. Whether the games were good or bad, the Wii was such a happy time in everyone's life. A time before unfinished games and microtransactions. Just pure and simple wagging and flinging a remote at the TV. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it so you don't have to.